remember my first time at Thousand Pines. I went with our youth group. Well, I remember in 1994 was my first year of ever going to Thousand Pines. I remember. It was about 1950. I was in the used car business with my dad. Um, I first went to Thousand Pines in 2004. I was. Uh, I remember the first time at Thousand grade. Pines, uh, summer of 1983. Yeah, I remember uh, back in 1944. Uh, there was a personal friend of mine whose name was Louis Villarreal, and he says, Doug, you really ought to go to Thousand Pines. I was up at Thousand Pines in April of this year, and, and I've really struggled with the idea of whether or not there's sacred space in the world. I don't want to uh, say there are certain places where God is more present than others, but something happened when I walked out of my car and I began to walk uh, down the main path of that camp late that night. And I just realized, uh, I don't know theologically if I can define that this is a sacred space, but there was some, there was just a deep sense in my, my heart that this is a, a dynamic place in the world in which God has done amazing things and God intends to do amazing things in the years to come. And it was there in the middle of that week, uh, about a Wednesday night, when we were down at Catherwood Circle, around the fire, and Dr. Catherwood was used to giving invitations uh, at different times. And whenever he felt like giving an invitation, he gave one. And so the Holy Spirit really spoke to me, and I walked down from the Catherwood Circle, down to where the fire was, and where that little water faucet is. And uh, God, Spirit just came into my life in such a wonderful, refreshing way. I couldn't contain myself. I wept through that experience. Uh, it wasn't so much what he said, it was who he was, and the attitude he had, and Christian commitment that was 100% uh, in, in uh, his ministry uh, to introduce youth to the church, to, to Christ and had a strong uh, view of how that should take place. And uh, the youth ministry was a very strong component for him in his ministry. And that's why he came to camp every year. Uh, and uh, I can still remember him saying to us, uh, when I was first going to camp, he was Irish, and, uh, uh, and he would say to us, young people, he said, you know, young people, when I was a lad, <laughs> and uh, he, he was just so well loved, he loved the scripture, but I always remember his faithfulness and what an example he was to me and to many others. What I think about when I think of Thousand Pines is that verse, be still and know that I'm God. It's funny, one of the first times I went to the camp, I heard a sound that night before we were all getting ready to go to sleep. I asked my counselor to come outside and listen, and he said, I don't hear anything. I said, no, listen. And it was the, uh, the wind blowing through the uh, trees. Like, what the heck is that? Don't get that in Alhambra. But um, it's funny, I mean, it, there's not a lot of places where you can just quiet down like that and just notice things, and notice things about yourself, reflect about things, and, uh, and be still. All the wonderful memories are just like filing through my head. Different just counselor meetings and <clears throat> hearing the different stories from youth pastors and children's pastors and how their the, the time there at Thousand Pines changed the face of their youth group. How they went back into the community and they gave back like never before. They helped the elderly people in the church like never before. Um, they went to school and they they witnessed like never before. You know, and then we went into the uh, chapel and they had a guy from uh, Charlotte, North or South Carolina, whichever one it was, but he was a speaker. And then at the end of the end of his talk, he said, everybody bow your head. Well, I'd been to church all my life, so that was not unfamiliar, but I was watching to see what was going on. And I got a little antsy. I just, I didn't feel comfortable there. So I just snuck out the back. And uh, that's how it started. Um, I was really skeptical. I, I was very closed off, and it was very hard to open up to people. And 
a few of my youth leaders asked me to take a walk and I was like, okay, I guess I'll tag along, you know. I can see they're trying to, to get me to open up. So I just kind of went along with it and um, they were talking about some kids who ex had accepted Christ and I didn't really know what that meant. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, cool. Took a walk down to the pool and we were sitting there and I looked at her and I was like, so what, what's accepting Christ mean? Like, what is that? <laughs> And she started explaining it to me, and it's that it's that Holy Spirit in the back of your head just telling you, you want this, you need this, you can't do this without me. Um, so I accepted Christ right there by the pool, and she was like, she accepted Christ, and Jason's like, oh my gosh, give me a hug, and very awkward, you know, I'm like you need a shirt for a hug. And right at the beginning, he said, do you mind if I ask you a question? And I said, no. What's on your mind? He says, you know my Jesus? Now, I'd heard all these words in my life, but I never heard it, it never, to me, a question. Do you know my vision? I said, well, yeah, yeah, he's Jesus' son. He died on the cross and buried, rose again. You know, I had all that done. He says, you know about Jesus, but I didn't ask you that. He says, do you know my Jesus? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I think that's what you need. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And then the guy did the smartest thing he ever did. He just, good night, <laughs> see you in the morning. And we went to bed and I laid there on a little deck there. And I, every time I closed my eyes trying to go to sleep, you know, I, all I did, you need my Jesus. Ask him and that night I asked Jesus to come into my heart. We, we seen the Lord a couple years ago we had a young lady that was in our youth ministry who um, a couple years prior to going to camp with us had walked in on her dad who had hung himself. And this, this young girl was so mad at God. And we barely got her to camp. And um, I can remember after one of the services, she, um, she, she finally said, you know, I'm tired of being angry at God. And um, I can remember um, a handful of us going out into the woods and, and hearing this young lady for the first time in her life. I mean, she'd gone to therapy. She'd gone to all these things that all these professionals thought that she had to have. And going out in the woods with her, with our youth leaders, and having this young lady scream out to God and cry out to him, saying, I'm mad at you, God, for taking my dad away. And as time went on in the, in the woods, and uh, I, I, I don't know if it's to you, but to me, that's probably one of the most impactful things I've ever had. And for this young lady to finally, after her screaming out to God and crying out, to finally say, God, I know it wasn't your fault. And to see this girl who, when she came to camp, was, was so introverted and just the next day to see her bopping around like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh and just a transformation. And there's something special to be said about camp and that's why we love it. That's why we push for every one of our students to go there because life and, 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 and decisions for Christ change up there. Mm -hmm. They change. And so I, I only know is this, that, that that night, I remember just saying, God, I'll do this again. I'll do this as long as you have asked us to do it, I'll do it. I, you know, I, one of the times that I realized this camp was unique was I was up at the camp at a pastor's retreat when the fire hit and they had to evacuate the camp. And we were in the middle of a session and they had said, hey, it's time get in your cars, we gotta evacuate. And I thought for a moment that maybe we're gonna lose Thousand Pines. And so on my way, before I left that time, uh, I ran over to Victory Circle, I knelt down, and I remembered all the different times, the, the hundreds of stories that I experienced uh, from students that I had brought, my friends, uh, watching people like Pastor Doug Jeffrey and others lead that time, I thought, wow, what an amazing place this has been. Uh, God has done so much stuff here and began to just to pray, God, I, I really hope you're not done with Thousand Pines yet. Uh, I think of that verse, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And it's worth it all. And sometimes after camp, I would be totally exhausted, but I would drive down from the mountain just spiritually exhilarated because I could see the hand of God in all of this and to see what he is doing. And Thousand Pines was a very important part of my life. And I've told Mike this too, that uh, 
uh, when I think a thousand pines, I could talk for five hours about this because it's so important.